I deal with strep A disease complications a lot. Strep A we know cause lots of infection, less severe, more severe, and then the long-term complications of it, mostly affecting kidneys and the heart. We do see a lot of cardiac patients, and most of the cardiacs we see are primarily from, I would say, rheumatic heart disease. We have no cardiothoracic surgeon in the Gambia, so basically what we do for them is medical management. Most of them are children, and they have to be on medication for life. And as children, they can't play, they can't function normally as other children, and socially it affects them. It's difficult, and it's a challenge on both the parent and the patients that are affected. Rheumatic fever and rheumatic heart disease have largely disappeared from wealthy countries. Interest from vaccine developers has dropped off. So what we need to do now is to help developers get their vaccines as quickly as possible through the development process. SAVAC rose from a number of WHO meetings where there was a really a sense that we need to do something. And we were very fortunate through a collaboration with the International Vaccine Institute in Seoul and my institute in Melbourne, the Murdoch Children's Research Institute, with a series of other experts from around the world to form the Strep A Global Vaccine Consortium, or SAVAC. The remit of SAVAC right from the start was to accelerate vaccine development for global health communities. In a country like Fiji, 0.6% of gross domestic product annually is taken up in care for people with rheumatic heart disease. It's probably similar in other parts of the world, but we just don't have data. So SAVAC helped to generate the global investment case, what we call the full value of vaccines analysis for the strep A. At the same time, we were also trying to understand, would there be safety issues? What would be the other potential uh, benefits? Could it impact, for instance, the development of antimicrobial resistance, which is actually emerging now in the group A streptococcus? We finished SAVAC 1, and there was a real feeling that there was unfinished business and that there was more to be done. SAVAC 2 has three strategic components. The first is establishing epidemiology and clinical trial sites in low and middle income countries. The second is engaging with industry to promote investment and activity. And the third is engaging with non-industry stakeholders so that the path is paved and that the need is understood for future vaccine deployment. Also one key partnership is the Australian Strep A Vaccine Initiative. This is a driving forward acceleration with a view to the world, um, but particularly trying to tackle the issue of the burden of disease uh, in Indigenous populations in Australia. SAVAC 2.0 has an executive committee. It is composed of individuals from a number of different countries. We know that Strep A is a global problem, and we have to be able to address the needs at multiple levels. SAVAC's mission is around accelerating vaccines for global communities. So it's really supporting local researchers to develop research protocols, research capacity, and the future um, option to do clinical trials. And those sites are in the Gambia, Malawi, Fiji, and in India. The MRC unit is one of the study sites for the SAVAC study. That will be undertaking surveillance uh, both in the community and also at the hospitals, trying to understand how much of strep A disease we have. We are hoping that over this two-year period, we'll be able to produce the evidence for people to understand how many people are getting strep A disease, which group of people are getting strep A disease, and more importantly, how can we develop a vaccine to help protect the children of the Gambia, indeed, the children of the world, you know, in general. In the Gambia, we've got very close links uh, with the communities uh, in which we work through giving them good understanding of why we're doing this study and what it may mean in the future in terms of preventing the burden of disease. We really uh, expect uh, very strong community support. Our samples we have been taking, yeah, our saliva, everything, 
and it was okay. I learned a lot. That's why I normally uh, also advise others, some of my neighbors, still now, we work with them together. Yes, and it is going to benefit the people of the Gambia. There are very few places within Africa, and especially in low and middle income countries, where strip A research is being done. And so the Savak study is, a, is, is an opportunity to build capacity. So we are hoping that through the Savak study over the two year period, uh, people will be trained from the lab angle of things, from the clinical angle of things, who we'll have more capability to be able to undertake studies involving strep A um, disease here in the Gambia, indeed, um, abroad. We hope that at the end of Save Act 2, we will have increased knowledge of the burden of disease in low middle income countries with at least two, possibly more, sites ready for later phase vaccine trials. We hope that we have industry on board, the experts in place, the networks in place, the policy makers in place, so that the world is ready for strep A vaccines to prevent severe strep A infections. The World Health Organization, countries around the world, aren't really that concerned about sore throats. What they are concerned about are the productive lives of adult men and women, which will be impacted by a disease which makes them unable to function, unable to work, unable to take care of their families. And it's this that we really want to prevent and this that we really need funding for.